All right, don't buy that all inequality is bad. That's one piece of advice for American Action Forum President, former Chief White House econo Economist Doug Holt Eakin for the Republican can presidential candidates. Really, Doug? Really. Uh, how is <laughs> I, I can't think of any reason why income inequality is good. Um, everyone should make exactly the same. Well, the no, person uh, who stays uh, in, sorry, in their the, pajamas. The extremes that we're seeing right now. But here's the question. What's the right amount? We know that less? zero. Why, why less? Um, because uh, I'll give you a lot of reasons. I'll give you one is, is that the, the economy is at greater risk when wealth is concentrated at the top because a slight change in the markets can lead to a tremendous economic pullback because the markets are the thing that are deriving a lot of economic growth are coming out of the The broader markets. base, the economic gains. But, but the, the big uh, change in uh, wealth inequality in the past 10 years has been the, the decline in the middle class in housing values. It's not concentration at the top. It's loss of value in the middle. That's what we have to get back. Well, which is led so, to the I mean, The, the second okay. piece of advice is yes. don't buy the common narratives. There are a lot of, the, of these stories out there that are just wrong. So you, you hear um, wages have become decoupled from productivity. Absolutely wrong. If you dig through that carefully, we have some research we're putting out on this uh, shortly, uh, we'll find that productivity and compensation line up just the way they always have. Uh, Which is stagnant. Productivity is not good. That's a yeah. big problem, yeah. right? So you identify the real problems and go to things that will actually solve them. There's nothing we're doing right now that is pro-productivity, right? There's no structural reforms like tax reform. There's no structural reforms like getting the entitlements under control, getting the debt on a stable path. Okay, so Those let's are the dig kinds of things that, that people need to understand. And my top piece of advice to you know Republicans and conservatives on the campaign trail is their economic narrative is simple. Government writes you check, you get checked, you're better off. Ours is much more complicated. Free people pursue their dreams. Companies start, innovate, sell products that people want. Everyone's made better off. There's tangible proof. The United States is the greatest economy the globe's ever seen, but it's a more complicated narrative and it has to be taught. So you'd say Republicans should be talking about economic freedom. And they should be talking about the, the ability to have people get ahead through work, right? The narrative here is we need big, bigger pro government programs and not reinforcing work. We ought to have every policy be about getting people to work. The dividing line in America between being poor and not poor is work. People who work have a much lower chance of poverty. And the dividing line between success and, and greater success in the labor market is skills. Give us maybe your, your inbox of the top two or three uh, priorities, legislative priorities for a potential next Demo uh, Republican president? Uh, I think the number one priority is to genuinely put our social safety net on a sustainable path. I mean, Medicare, Medicaid, Social Security, the Affordable Care Act, it, none of it adds up over the next 10 years, right? 10 years from now, we're running a trillion dollar deficit, 800 billion of its interest on previous borrowing. If you want to be president, you're going to be yeah. president for the next eight years. Good luck with that. You but so far, nobody's running with that. on entitlement reform. Um, no, but, but we have heard some Republicans talk about it, right? Jeb Bush has talked about yep. raising the retirement age. Uh, Chris Christie's talked about some entitlement reforms. And increasingly, everyone, Republican, Democrat, isn't going to matter. They're going to have to talk about this because the numbers are overwhelming. We were talking during the break about uh, Donald Trump's uh, immigration plan. Uh, what is the cost of that immigration plan? Uh, we did uh, a look at what it would take to literally identify the 11 million uh, illegal uh, president in the United States and, and deport them, right? That means you have to find them, boots on the ground. You have to process them. They're entitled to administrative hearings. You need judges. You have to house them while, while their uh, hearings are away. Then you actually have to literally deport them. It's going to take about 20 years and cost $400 billion. Does that include the price of the wall? Uh, that did not include <laughs> the price of the wall. And having seen his other buildings, that wall is going to be pretty pricey. Is there a Republican candidate that you're ready to support or that you're thinking about supporting? Uh, no, I'm not personally backing anyone in the primaries. Um, I've, I've talked to a lot of the candidates. I think it's a, a, Ooh, a really good to? field. I really yeah. do. I've spoken to the campaigns for uh, Jeb Bush, for Scott Walker, for Marco Rubio, for uh, Carly Fiorini, Fiorina, um, Lindsey Graham. Uh, you know, doors open. Anyone who wants to come in, I'm welcome. Uh, who do you think is thinking the most about the economy? Uh, among those people? Uh, I think there, there are a lot of people who have put out important pieces there. I mean, we know uh, Bush has made 4% growth a centerpiece of what he wants to do. Um, Christie's had a pretty policy-rich campaign, lots of proposals. Rubio's a very policy-rich kind of guy. Walker's talking about his record in Wisconsin. So, um, you know, there's been a, a lot of sound and fury over the immigration issue and, and Trump's role in that. But, but if you put that aside, it's really been about the economy. That's the number one issue for people. Is Bush's 4% growth plan realistic? You can get 4% growth. We, we've done that many, many times. The details he hasn't, you know, I haven't seen his tax reform plan yet. We'll see. Yeah. Um, but 
you know, no one should accept what we've, what we've done recently, right? We're averaging under 2.5%. The CBO pegs the long-term growth potential of the U.S. economy at 2.1%. That's disgraceful. We need to do much, much better. What's your prescription for 4% growth? Uh, entitlement reform that yep. takes care of the debt, tax reform, immigration reform, because the reality is our entire future population growth and labor force growth comes from immigration, so we get to pick our future with immigration reform. You've got to do something about the regulatory burden. We have added $684 billion in new regulatory costs in the past six years. That's over $100 billion a year in regulatory costs. So you've got to take care of that. And we need a genuine education reform. We have identified failure in the U.S. education system. We know the, the teacher, the principal, the school, but we've never fixed it. We've got to get that right.